Well, it's a lot of work to run a record label. When you become a musician, which happens over a period of time, you don't just sit down one day and say, I'm going to play the piano for a living. Because the thought of actually making money from doing music it is, for people that are educated, it's ridiculous. All right, welcome back. Final half hour of the Rod Arquette Show. It is a real delight to welcome uh, my next guest to the show. We're going to spend some time talking about it. His name is Paul Cardell, number one Billboard artist, has a brand new CD out. I get, I, I, do you call them albums or do we call them CDs anymore? <laughs> Paul, do you have any idea? Well, we call them CDs. Do we call them CDs? Most people call them downloads, MP3s. Do <laughs> it changes. I'm just glad it's not an 8-track. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a point where, you know, Dr. said, we've got to get you a new heart. There's, there, there's no choice. What was that... What was that discussion like? I knew my whole life that one day I would need a heart transplant. I'd had numerous heart surgeries, but when that day comes, it's like somebody telling you, you gotta retire tomorrow, did you save your money? What was it like when you got the phone call? We think we've, I was, got, we I, think we've got a heart transplant. I was living in the children's hospital, and I had been there a month. Mm -hmm. And they came in, and by the time they came in, I had waited 385 days. Mm. And when they come in, they tell you, we're going to surgery in a few hours. You know, go ahead and say whatever you need to say to your family. You know, what is it that you would say? So I want to talk about how this new CD called Saving Tiny Hearts relates to this. So we'll continue our conversation in a few minutes. Wonderful. All right, Paul Cardall with us here on the Rod Arquette Show and Talk Radio 105.7 FM, 570 AM. Starting a label really was a means to an end because I had recorded a couple albums I was signed with a major label, Narada, who was owned by Virgin Records, but it was at a time when they were transitioning from new age to smooth jazz, and I was not interested in doing smooth jazz. It's just not what I like to do, and I really don't know how to do it. I pretty much just began to market every year a new CD, and it was like a snowball effect, one after another. Just keep it going, and slowly the audience just gets bigger and bigger but it's a lot of work I don't sit in here and play the piano all day people think I just do you play is that what you do you play the piano how are you I'm Paul what's your name Riley Riley <laughs> these guys got to skip school to oh school. man that's awesome <laughs> what a good cause so after all those interviews and all the hard work the advertising catalog advertising getting the word out social media everything we were able to debut at number nine on the Billboard New Age chart, which is always an amazing honor to get on the chart. You've got to practice, you've got to learn how to play it, but then you have to, there has to be a reality check. If, obviously your parents are gonna say, that was fantastic, play it again. But if a complete stranger asks you to play that song again, then you know you have something. It's more than just learning how to write a song. You're setting up a lemonade stand. And the guy next to you has set up a lemonade stand. And everybody's in the business of selling lemonade, but why is your lemonade different from anybody else's? How much does that lemonade cost? How are you gonna let people know about it? So I spent most of my career as a pianist learning how to make a living when you realize that you have something special and you brand that and treat it like a lemonade stand that's when you've taken it to a new level if people are requesting to hear your music and they want you to perform and they want to hear it then you should consider doing it but at the same time, you should be studying everything you can about the music industry and the music business and how it works. I tell people all the time, I don't see the value of going to study music in college unless you want to teach the rest of your life. If you want to do it for a living, take marketing classes, take business classes, learn how to communicate with, in the business world, take public relations classes. But I wouldn't go for the music degree, I'd go for the business degree, is what I would recommend. Tell me about that moment when you meet a young child who's got autism. 
or some struggle, maybe some social or emotional struggles, and they tell you that your music is what helps them survive. We're the Baxter family, and we had the boys in the school today to come and meet Paul Cardall. Um, this is Mason, he's nine, he has an autism diagnosis, and he has listened to Paul Cardall for a long time. When they say that the music has helped them, uh, I realize that it's really because of my faith. I don't think it's necessarily me, I think God is reaching them, and uh, the music is the instrument to, for him to reach them. I just happen to be doing what I love, and uh, so I'm, I'm humbled and overwhelmed. I love Paul Carter's music. He's the one who made me start taking lessons in the first place. He's such an inspiration to me. And I listen to the music in bed to help me sleep. You guys are awesome. Good to Can see you. you. Oh, thank Good you. you. I'm glad you guys came. It, may, it means a lot to me that you came. Yep. All right, so keep playing the piano, because playing the piano will make you happy. You know, when you get one individual person saying, gosh, this music helped me, then it, to me, it's all worth it.